Hello, I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Ross Sutherland. Welcome to Insight and a special look at a period of purple crying. That is something where when the baby is here, it cries for a long time, but it's there's a period of time where it's really hard to deal with, and people may not be prepared for that when they have a baby, so we brought on set two nurses, postpartum nurses from Salem Health, Mother Baby Unit. Hi, thank you for joining us. And they help the new mom get through this period. Give us some uh, insight on what's going on here. Um, and this is not a real baby, this obviously. Is it looks a real. American baby. Yes. This is our baby that's in the front of our unit <laughs> <laughs> that demonstrates safe sleep on the unit, coming in and out of the unit. Oh. Parents can stop by and look at the crib and what safe sleep looks like for babies. Well, that's really cool. You're both parents yourself, right, moms? Yeah. yeah. And you especially. What what do you have? You have. <laughs> I'm Brie Comentes, and I have a set of triplets and a set of twins. A set of oh my gosh, I think we're having a knowledge bank here. <laughs> <laughs> so why do they call it a period of purple crying? So period of purple crying, um, we have our pamphlet with us that the hospital supplies all parents. We ask that they watch it before discharge, so going home they know kind of what to expect. Not all babies go through um, a period of purple crying, but some do. Mm -hmm. um, usually it starts at about two weeks of age and can last up to five months um, where babies are inconsolable, they're not pain, you know, in pain, um, but they get irritable and cry for long amounts of time, regardless of mm -hmm. what soothing techniques that their care providers offer. Um, so at the hospital, we see mamas and daddies and their family um, environment, and a lot of times it's a first time a first time scenario. Um, there are the parents that have had multiple children and they kind of know that that may be on the horizon. So um, since we only get to be with families for a very short time, it's just kind of um, reiterating the basics. Um, why is baby crying? Because a lot of times, you know, you're given a baby and say, here go, you know, <laughs> feed the baby, call us if you need us. So we try to be very helpful um, and help with, um, you know, skin to skin. They encourage skin to skin. Babies are going to mama's skin right after delivery to encourage that bonding and to soothe baby from the beginning. Um, but outside of that, just in the hospital, we, you know, skin to skin, breastfeeding baby, uh, what that looks like, uh, burping baby, changing baby, kind of giving parents ideas of why is baby crying and that it's not just mama's job, that it's a team a team effort. And I always tell my parents, um, mamas are not in it alone. You're, you know, if you have good support, um, you have your family to assist with that, but I always tell mom and dad if they're present that it, you both made this beautiful baby. So as a team, be a team and take turns because mm -hmm. um, it can be very exhausting for mamas. Mm -hmm. So the purple crying is caused by different things. It's not just or no, it's a development of oh. a baby. Baby development, all mm -hmm. normal. It's a normal development. We use the term the period of purple crying to talk about this uh, crying that occurs in the first few months of life. And we do that because the letters of the word purple each stand for one of the characteristics which is so frustrating for parents. The first P stands for the peak pattern where the amount of crying that occurs per day goes up and up and up until the second or third month of life and then decreases. This crying can be either a lot or a little at the time of the peak crying. The U is for the fact that most of this crying is unexpected. It starts and it stops for no apparent reason, either in the environment or in the baby, and uh, it is very frustrating to parents for that reason. The R is for the fact that these crying episodes are resistant to soothing no matter what you do. They're not related to feeding, they're not related to dirty diapers. So even though some of these bouts are unsoothable, it's still good to try to soothe the babies. If you do, you can reduce the crying by as much as 50%. The second P is because the baby looks like it's in pain even when it's not. And the L is for the fact that the crying bouts that go on at this time are very long. Some of them can be an hour or two hours in length. And they can cry as much as five or six hours a day and still be completely normal. The E is for the fact that it tends to cluster in the evening or the late afternoon, uh, just when the parents are the most tired. All of these things together are frustrating, and they're frustrating in and of themselves, and when they all occur at the same time, they can be terribly frustrating for parents, even though the baby's totally not. Mm -hmm. And all babies go through it, just some you don't notice, and some you notice a lot, and they can cry five or more hours in a 24-hour period, which can be super frustrating, super exhausting, and I always tell my patients that just remember that it's 
totally okay to put your baby down in a safe place and give yourself a break. Sometimes you need just five minutes away from it to get back to yourself mm -hmm. and then come back to the situation fresh again. Mm -hmm. And that's safe for both you and the baby. Give right. us some tips. So uh, first, I've Outside of when babies are crying, I always make sure baby's been fed, baby's been burped, and not sitting in a wet or soiled diaper, because right. those can be irritating to babies. So oftentimes, um, we'll get calls to the nurse's station, help me swaddle the baby. I don't know how to wrap the baby. Good, so, good call. Um, how do you do that? In a safe zone. So I we use our cribs at work, mm -hmm. um, not on the end of a bed or a couch, maybe even on the floor. A floor at home is a safe um, area for baby. Okay. No so, place to fall. No fake baby, not a real baby here. <laughs> <laughs> so there's lots of ways. I always encourage parents to, um, if they're not quite sure and they don't have like a fancy swaddle blanket to give, um, kind of the one way to wrap a baby. YouTube is a great place to find different ways um, and right. techniques to, to swaddle babies. So I take our big, our big blanket and I always say lay it out like a softball or baseball field. And then I bring the second base down and that's where baby's shoulders are going to go and their feet are going to go to the catcher mm. down here okay. and you've got your first and your third hanging out on the side this is great for dads. you're supporting the, <laughs> yeah you're supporting yeah. baby's neck holding neck and bottom I mean, you have the most control over babies they they're very strong and sometimes thrust their heads back so you can start with first or third base whichever whichever works so you come down um, and i always tuck kind of in and bring oh. it across baby's tummy. So their arms, they're ninjas and they're strong so they can get their arms out easily. So we kind of wrap it down and then bring your catchers up and then follow it by the opposite and just gently kind of pulling that across baby's chest and having it tuck underneath baby's back and their body weight holds the swaddle in place. Oh. Now is that to give them that sense of being yeah. enclosed yeah. and yeah. kind of hugged? Exactly. It's kind Look of scary that. for babies because they've been like this to be out. Wow. Look at that. And then and it makes it easy to, uh, here. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're so tiny. They are. Absolutely. What about if a baby is, for example, inconsolable and you just think that maybe they, their tummies are having a How do you hold them to... You know, like rocking is one yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I remember that. But is there something called a colic hold? Um, there's lots of different names for different positions of holding baby, whether baby's at breast in different positions or just holding. I've heard of um, it being called different things. Um, I feel like sometimes having them not swaddled if you're going to hold them in a in a different uh, maneuver. Right. But I've seen um, babies kind of be held where if if you think their tummy is upset and you. Across the arm. Kind of your where your forearm is against baby's tummy. So it's yeah. kind of some pressure. I and mean, you're holding baby real snug um, and just kind of, you know, moving with them. And sometimes they're you know, like, oh, wow, what are, we, what are we doing? This is something different. Um, and whether it's, you know, they may still cry no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but if they are swaddled, I always help, you know, kind of rock and walk and talk. And I'm so sorry you're upset. You know, I just don't know, you know, talk to mm -hmm. them because... It is frustrating when a baby's crying and everything you're doing isn't working. Mm. It's you, important to remember that it's just for a period of time. It's not going to last forever and there's no long-term effects of it. Oh, that's wonderful just Don't to know. shake baby. Yeah. Don't yeah. shake <laughs> shake baby. I think yeah. that's something that people, uh, so many um, unfortunate stories, it's very sad, tragic stories come out about shaken baby. Mm -hmm. Is this that period of time also where those kinds of things happen? It is. Yes, it is. And it's and it's when providers kind of reach their limit of frustration with a baby that, you know, they may pick baby up and say, why are you crying? But I almost want to protect this. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> it's, I mean, never shake a baby. Yeah. If you feel like you're, you're escalating and like... Up, being upset with baby, put baby down, put baby in their crib, take five minutes, take a breather, you know, change off with mom, change off with dad, have grandma come over and let you, you know, take five seconds outside, go for a walk, take a quick shower if you haven't showered in a few days, because oftentimes that happens with a new mama. Mm -hmm. And sleep when the baby sleeps. And sleep when baby sleeps. Oh my <laughs> that gosh. was the one thing I tell new <laughs> parents. I said, I won't tell you what to do, but sleep when the baby sleeps. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's much easier said than done. Absolutely. But if you have, you know, friends and family always want to come and see the baby and touch and love, and it's exhausting. 
Then when they come over and they want to help, say, fabulous, do you think you could go stick a load of laundry in? Or do you think you could go <laughs> delegate tasks? Well, you conk out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's easy to conk out. You're just tired. That's well, wonderful. And it's nice to know that the reason they're crying is it's developmental. It isn't because mm -hmm. you haven't done anything or yeah. there's something that you can do that you're not doing to make them stop. Right. I wonder, some people used to think, and I don't know how you think about this, but just let the baby cry. It's good for its lungs. Leave it alone. And it, that doesn't seem like so right, is it? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> See, there you go. I'm asking a good question. Yeah, you no, are absolutely. asking a good question. I personally hate to hear my babies cry. So if there's, if I'm feeling, you know, like, okay, I can go back at this and I haven't been at it for hours, mm -hmm. um, try to breastfeed. Is the baby hungry? Take a bottle if they're bottle feeding. Um, do they have an upset tummy? How, how old is baby? And the pediatrician will have ideas and thoughts and on each like doctor visit they give you kind of what to expect at this age and, and how to how to go ahead and do that. Is, you know, per the pediatrician, it, maybe the baby has gas and gas drops are a recommendation from the pediatrician. Mm -hmm. Dry gas drops. And if every everything that you're doing isn't helping, it's just kind of getting through it. Make sure baby's fed. Make sure baby doesn't have a wet or poopy diaper and yeah. is in a safe environment. Well, Which, and I would think just being around the baby would kind of, even though it's crying, it would yeah. give it some sense of yeah of safety. Usually baby's favorite place is to be with mama or whoever their primary care provider is. Skin to skin. Mm -hmm. Skin to skin. Huh. Well, where can people get more information from you? Well, they could always call us. We're yeah, always absolutely. there 24 hours a day. So if it, even in the middle of the night, they don't know what's going on, we're available. They can call us. Um, they can talk to their pediatrician. They can call them directly. Mm -hmm. They'll be hooked up with a nurse there, and then yeah. And right. for the for the period of purple crying, there's the click. Oh yeah, the click campaign, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we promote that at the hospital mm -hmm. every November. We do pr the purple hats for babies. Mm -hmm. um, we get the. I think it's one of the senior citizen centers donate a lot of our knitted hats for our newborns. I have mm -hmm. friends who actually yeah. knit purple hats for oh, them. Wow. Yeah, just donate them to mm -hmm. you. Yep. Donate them to. That's something that people can. Do uh, if they are knitters or crocheters, mm -hmm. uh, and they're welcome hats, aren't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. May I see the baby? Do you have a name for this baby? Uh, we don't know. Nope. <laughs> it's just adorable. <laughs> Thank you for giving your all to uh, helping us understand. The <laughs> That's right. Support the baby. That's right. Support the head. Support the head. That's right. And. Thank you for joining us today on Insight. Thanks for having And thank you for joining us. I'm Wendy Brokaw. <laughs> and I'm Ross Sutherland. We'll see you next time. Here, want to hold? <laughs> Healthy babies can cry a lot in their first five months of life. The period of purple crying is a new way to understand this crying. It explains what is normal, what you can expect, and how to keep your baby safe. Salem Health gives each family of a new baby a complimentary DVD, The Period of Purple Crying, created by the National Center on Shaken Baby Syndrome. To learn more, visit purplecrying.info or call the National Center on Shaken Baby Syndrome at 801-447-9360.